All right, after a year of sitting in the closet collecting dust, I think it's finally time to start getting back to my dark Eldar and starting up again with the Reaver jet bikes. They've already been primed and undercoated with a coat of burnt umber, and now I'm airbrushing some hull red onto them, Vallejo Air hull red. And that's just going on the front portion of the bike and also uh, on the wings, tips of the wings on the sides and on the top. Step number two is repeating the exact same process on the exact same areas, this time using Vallejo Model Air 102 Red. And then we finally finish up the red by mixing in some Vallejo Model Color Flat Red into the previous model air red and concentrating more on just the tips the uh the very front of the bike and just the end tips on the fins next comes a layer of hairspray straight out the aerosol can uh, it's better to apply it with an airbrush but i keep forgetting to pick up uh, a bottle airbrush that can pour into the airbrush and uh, i really hate decanting it in because i hate the smell after the hairspray dried for about an hour, I base coated the entire bike with a Vallejo Model Air Intermediate Blue. And if anyone out there just watched or remembers the Catalyte Warriors video that I did over a year ago, uh, I am following, I'm not following the exact same paint scheme I did on that one. So there are going to be alterations because it has been a year and I decided to tweak the scheme a little bit, just in case you're comparing the two videos. Next, I mixed in a little bit of Vallejo Game Color Magic Blue and uh, just trying to highlight the bike a little bit, uh, concentrating on the top ridge and along the sides. And then one final highlight with the airbrush, mixing in a little bit of white to that previous mix. I should have done this with a regular brush. Uh, I'm not that accurate with an airbrush and I kind of went overboard trying to airbrush this color on. Uh, a regular brush would have been much more precise. Due to my poor airbrushing highlight job, I decided to add a couple more highlights using the brush. Uh, again, this mixture is the intermediate blue, magic blue, and white. I can't tell you the exact ratios, unfortunately because uh, I do not remember. And then one final highlight edging layer, mixing in a great amount of white to that previous mixture and just hitting the edges, the tips of the edges here and there. And now for the fun part, chipping the paint. I already let some water soak into the model for about a minute off camera to save time. And uh, I'm just removing the blue to expose the previous red just on the front of the bike and along the wing tips. Now this technique here, uh, I've used a few times before to do rust and that's what it's normally used for. However, I'm using it slightly different uh, here. I have this blue, kind of dirty blue paint scheme for my bikes, and for the vehicles I needed to add another color to it, and I decided to use red because that was a, uh, a minor color on the figures that I already painted, but I couldn't figure out how to add it in. I was looking at stripes or some sort of pattern, and since I was going for a sort of wasteland feel to these guys, a lot of rust and what have you. I decided to use the red, um, but apply it as it were rust. And so it's it's kind of a blending of two techniques here. I'm, I'm doing it to add color to it, but I'm doing it in a rust pattern. And it also kinda sorta looks like blood too. So it's, it is a unusual effect, not something I would normally do, but I think in the end, it kinda works out because it's chipped paint so it looks worn. Uh, it's kind of bloody so it looks evil. And um, it, it adds that extra color 
that I need into it. And, you know, perhaps it's just peeled paint and there's red color underneath. After all the chipping was done, I just had to paint all the accoutrements. Uh, the skulls on the back, the seat, the control panel, the handlebars. Uh, oops, don't drop the figure there. Um, and a few of the other little bits here and there. Off camera, I airbrushed some pledge floor care. That would be gloss acrylic, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Onto the miniatures to protect it for this step. And like I've been doing a lot lately, I gave the whole thing a coat of AK Interactive's uh, enamel rust streaks. And I know I've been using it a lot, and <laughs> you're gonna see a few other videos where I'm still gonna be using it. However, it's very appropriate in this case since I wanted a dirty, rusty vehicle. So that is airbrushed on a nice thick coat. And then we move on to the next step after it dries. As usual, the next step is to remove the wash from all the raised areas using a t-shirt and or q-tips as needed. Uh, had something a little unusual happen though, I never tried this method on a non-brownish color. Uh, I never done it over blue. And the red rust enamel wash actually altered the look of the blue. It kind of turned it green, so there must be a little bit of yellow in there. And so I didn't want to take it all off, uh, but I had to take a great deal of the enamel wash off to uh, get my blue color back. I was planning to leave a lot of streaks, but unfortunately um, I couldn't do that without greatly drastically changing the color of the model. I thought that step would be pretty much it and the bike would be done, however, I decided to go back and repaint all the non-blue bits on the model, the the seat and the skulls and the control panel and all that stuff because um, while the brown would have shaded it all accurately, uh, I decided I didn't like the tone that it gave it since the bike should be rusty but not the seat, um, but it still had sort of that enamel film on it. Uh, I decided to go back and repaint all those areas so they stand out more from the rusted blue color. The riders I'm going to skip over because they're not painted much differently than the Cabalite Warriors I did last year, uh, except for some slight tweaks in the paint scheme. However, uh, also we're going to cover them the same paint scheme on some other figures in the future, maybe the witches or what have you, so no sense in repeating myself twice. I will say I did make one incredibly stupid mistake. If you noticed in the previous clip, I had the riders mounted in a sitting up position uh, when I was painting them, and uh, I made a cardinal basic mistake, beginner's mistake. Uh, when you paint items separately, like a horse and a rider, or a jet bike and a rider, uh, you have to remember to paint them as if the lighting is coming from the same angle for both of them. And uh, I was a moron, and I forgot that, and so I painted them as the light was coming straight down to them as I had them on the paint stand, so right at the top of the shoulders, when in fact when they're on the bikes, they are leaning forward. So I had to go back and touch up and fix the overhead light scheme for these guys. Uh, so I kind of had to paint them twice. And there we have it. We are done with all three bikes. I know there's only two there, but the third one wouldn't fit on the stand. And um, they look okay. I wasn't really happy with this project because I don't know how other painters face this challenge, but if you Personally, if I leave a project sitting for too long, I, I find it really hard to continue to work on it because I find other projects to, that distract me. And uh, This has been sitting on my desk for over three months and when I finally got to painting the figures, it was really painful and uh, the paint job is not that great because um, well, you, you can tell that I was struggling to paint it and that's because it was sitting on my desk for so long. Uh, I find things a lot easier and they usually look better if I could paint them right away. If 
Uh, some of my best paint jobs have been done in one evening. So um, I don't know if other people have that issue or not, but uh, you know, give it a shot. Rather than leaving things undone for months, try to get them done as fast as you can, and uh, you'll be able to tell if they come out better or not. But anyway, hopefully uh, the Dark Eldar won't be in the closet for another year, and uh, we'll be seeing more of them soon. Thanks for watching.